Hi, I'm Andres from Hansa Biomed Life Sciences, and I will discuss affinity isolation of extracellular vesicles from urine. Now, affinity isolation is an excellent idea for EV purification, as it is fast and simple and can give very high purity of the final sample, depending, of course, on the specific tool and marker used. And for EVs, there are plenty of markers to choose from. Moreover, affinity isolations can be automated and easily integrated with downstream applications such as biomarker discovery or diagnostic platforms. Now in this work, we compared antibody-based affinity isolation on magnetic beads and latex beads with peptide-based affinity isolation tools. For the comparison of the methods, we implemented non-labeled or fluorescent HEC EV spiking and also a non-EV and non-human EV controls. To isolate the uh, spiked in EVs, we took advantage of the difference in surface marker expression between urine EVs and the spiked in samples. As matrices, we used uh, PBS with PSA or urine that was tenfold concentrated with tangential flow filtration. To analyze the samples, we used plate fluorescent assay, sandwich immunoassay, nanoparticle tracking analysis, Western blot, and RNA quantification. Now, coming to the results, we can see that uh, Western blot allows us to detect EV markers in the latex speed samples and uh, peptide precipitation samples. However, at the same time, there is a high urimogenin contamination in these samples visible. Samples from magnetic bead isolations fell below the detection limit of this Western blot. To get better quantification of the captured sample, we assess the capture of fluorescently uh, labeled EVs uh, spiked in to urine. The method was validated to accurately report captured EVs. From this more sensitive blade fluorescent assay, we can see not only capture of EVs in the, the magnetic bead samples, but also that the capture is specific compared to the isolated antibody control. And these results also were in line with sandwich immunoassay and RNA quantification uh, from the EVs isolated from urine. Now the plate fluorescent assay allows us to calculate recovery and specificity, which helps to compare different isolation supports and methods. It is possible to achieve quite high effective recovery with magnetic immunobeads. Effective recovery takes into account the relative abundance of EVs carrying the antibody target. Now, centrifugation and precipitation based methods tend to show higher recovery than was the original input. This is likely due to how isolated autofluorescent components of urine that interfere with the fluorescent readout. The specificity of immune affinity is confirmed also by the control experiments with non-human EVs and non-EVs. And importantly, while the autofluorescent components of urine may interfere with fluorescent assays, as we saw with uh, these latex beads and, and peptide uh, isolation methods, this autofluorescence can be quite valuable in evaluating actually the purity of the final sample. To conclude, let's look at the methods on a yield versus specificity field. Now, precipitation methods can give high yield, but it comes at the expense of purity. However, if purity is not paramount, they are fast methods and good, for example, for biomarker discovery. The results uh, from immune affinity isolation with beads dep depends greatly on the bead type and whether the method would require, for example, centrifugation which may lead to co-isolation of contaminating agents, such as urinomodulin. Immunoaffinity with magnetic beads offers the highest specificity and purity, lending itself well to automation and sensitive downstream applications. Thank you for listening, and you can contact me on this email.